Welcome to our second installment of our Sherburn Soil and Water podcast for the 2024 summer season. And today we're going to be talking about USD programs available to our agricultural operators in Sherburn County. So I'm going to pass it over for introductions first to Katie Evans. Hi, my name is Katie Evans. I am a district conservationist with the Natural Resources Conservation Service, NRCS, and our office is located in Elk River. I've been with NRCS for 14 years. Um, prior to that, I was at the Soil and Water Conservation District in Benton County for about three years. I grew up on a dairy farm in Wright County. Um, we had a small herd of about 40 cows, and I've always loved working with farmers. All right, and I am Stacy Schlangen. I am a program technician with the Farm Service Agency. I've been with the agency for about nine years. Um, I also grew up on a dairy farm in um, Sherburn County, Minnesota. And, um, you know, I, I just grew up always working with farmers, being around farmers. I knew I'd love this job. And actually, my mom used to work for the agency back in the late 80s and early 90s. So I guess it's kind of in my blood. I didn't know that this was an FSA legacy going on. It is, That's amazing. It is. <laughs> and and so I work for the Sherburn Soil and Water Conservation District and how the three agencies are connected. Uh, they're, they're usually referred to as sister agencies. Um, we all work together. Um, we have different programs, but we all have very similar goals to helping out operators or producers or farmers or, or whatever you want to call them. And um, the Sherburn SWCD started in 1944, um, and it came out of the Dust Bowl, just like NRCS did. And so tell me a little bit more about, because I used to work for NRCS, so I know what they do. Um, but Katie, what do you do? We work with um, farmers, private landowners to um, address resource concerns, but we are a voluntary conservation program agency. So we provide technical assistance on cropland, pasture land, um, forest land, and um, other areas. And then we can also have our farm bill programs for conservation to provide financial assistance. You threw in farm bill. Some people don't understand um, that some of these conservation programs are tied into the farm bill. So it, it becomes very important for a lot of different people, um, but also a uh, cost share for operators. Uh, Stacy, what does FSA do? What do you do? And, and we administer um, the, the program through that are brought through from the farm bill, which Currently, if people don't know, they are working on a new farm bill. We are in the last year um, of the farm, the current farm bill. They extended it one year through 2024. Um, so we administer all of those programs, the federally sponsored programs that are, I guess, out of the farm bill. So do you want to start listing some of them? Yeah, yeah. We have a, a few different types of programs, but a lot of what we do is is disaster type programs. Okay. Um, you know, one of our, some of our more popular programs, I'll say we have like, we have ARC PLC, which is the agricultural risk coverage and price loss coverage. And um, that when it's triggered, it provides revenue and price loss assistance um, to producers in that, that to anyone who has base acres, which is a historical planting on their farm. We have ELAP, um, which is emergency assistance for livestock, honeybees and farm raised fish. This provides um, payments to producers to help compensate for losses um, due to adverse weather, diseases, or other conditions. Um, we have programs for livestock disaster. Um, we have non-insurable crop um, assistance for um, crops that are not eligible for crop insurance. We have a, a program for that that also provides financial assistance for um, losses due to drought or any other kind of natural causes. Um, we also have a, a couple of different conservation programs. It's called CRP. There's a couple of different types of CRP that we offer. And this kind of takes um, environmentally sensitive land out of crop production, puts it into a conserving practice for 10 to 15 years um, to kind of help bring the, the soils back and address any, any concerns that you may have. Uh, we also have several different types of loans uh, available through FSA. We have beginning farmer loans, we have um, facility loans, we have operating loan, dr direct loans, um, micro loans. Um, we also have youth loans available for 
anyone you know under the age of um, 20, I believe. So a lot of different types of things that, that we offer. Awesome. So is there a minimum number of acres that someone has to have to be eligible for programs? There is not. Um, you know, some programs have acreage requirements, um, mm -hmm. but it, it, for most programs, there is not a, a minimum. Okay. How about you, Katie? And let's see how many acronyms we can use in the next 30 <laughs> seconds. I, know, I was just going to say, like, we love our acronyms. So <laughs> for <laughs> our conservation programs through NRCS, um, our, our big three, I would say, are EQIP, which is the Environmental Quality Incentives Program. Um, and that through that, we can address um, resource concerns on cropland, pasture land, forest land, and farmstead acres. And our resource concern list is quite long. So we try to address resource concerns for soil conditions, erosion, water erosion, wildlife habitat, um, nutrients going into surface water, groundwater. Um, we like to go out and kind of see the property and the farm and, and talk with farmers and just see what their concerns are. And if there's something that we can address through any of our programs, we'll see which one fits the best. But EQIP is by far one of our most popular. Um, another one is our CSP, Conservation Stewardship Program, which is really built for, for anybody who's already doing conservation, if they want to take it to the next level. Um, that's a great way to do that. And the amounts of practices that we have is also quite large. So we try to tailor what we have to see if we can, um, if it fits on the farm that we're visiting. And then we have RCPP, the Regional Conservation Partnership Program, which is really similar to EQIP, but it is um, a way to target either priority watershed areas or resource concern practices and kind of dedicate funding in a different way to meet some of those needs. Um, those are probably our biggest three programs that we're working with. Um, and then we also provide technical assistance for CRP that Stacy had talked about too. So we're involved with that one as well. And the, the other thing I wanted to bring up is uh, 1026 compliance, because this can be confusing for people. Um, so 1026 compliance refers to the Swamp Buster um, and also um, ATL land. So needing to be in compliance uh, on the wetland, uh, which is usually the bigger thing in Sherburn County. We don't have a lot of highly erodible lands in Sherburn, uh, but there are a few spots. Um, but FSA and NRCS also work together on making sure that folks are in compliance with the Food Security Act of 1985, which means that you're not draining, dredging, or filling any wetlands that weren't you know, converted prior to 85. So that also includes like maintenance requests for tile lines or cleaning out ditches. Again, Sherburne County, we don't have a ton of tiling or ditching, but there are spots um, where that does happen and that it needs to be maintained. Um, so all of these have paperwork, am I right? Yes. yes. <laughs> Are you guys going to help people? Does it need to be this huge, onerous task that's so scary that you just want to avoid programs forever? No, no, no not at all. <laughs> <laughs> we will walk everybody through every step of the way because the paperwork yeah. process is it can feel daunting at first, um, but we're here to help. And, you know, as federal programs go, sometimes ours can take a little bit longer, but yeah, we'll also help everybody through that. I mean, look, look how friendly we all are. We <laughs> love helping people get through paperwork. So what are some programs that uh, you offer that maybe are surprising or maybe underutilized in Sherburne County? And Stacy, I'm going to have you go first. Is there a okay. program that's out there that you, you wonder why don't people use this more? You know, when we have in, in, I, I don't know if we have a ton of organic in Sherburne County, but we do have an organic cost share certification program that I feel is pretty underutilized. Um, we have, it's, it's expensive to, to be certified organic, and we offer cost share on that. Um, very simple process. And um, yeah, it's, you know, last year and it was up to, I believe, 50% of your cost or $750. It was the max. Um, and you can actually apply through, for that through us or through the state of Minnesota. Okay. How about you, Katie? Um, I'd say a lot of our programs, you know, originally were 
kind of made for some of our larger farmers, but we are getting now towards um, initiatives for small scale um, ur urban ag um, as they're becoming more popular. So we are building our programs to start fitting those new needs. So they're, they're newer for us and we're building new um, practices that could adjust those resource concerns. So that's something new, um, things like seasonal high tunnels, but also doing things like cover crops or crop rotations on small scale and grazing systems on more of our small scale um, farms, I think are are really um, important and, and they are popular, but I think there's also maybe some a need in, in a lot of our other areas too. Yeah, because it's also important to realize that uh, you don't have to get financial assistance. You can still get technical assistance, even if you don't want any dollars tied to it. And uh, Katie and I can both do site visits and you already pay for those with your tax dollars, so they don't cost you anything. Um, so we can come out and we can talk about resource concerns and it, it doesn't have to become a contract. Um, we can just have a good conversation about what you maybe want to do. So you mentioned this a little bit, Katie, but there are deadlines for these programs. Um, most of them aren't uh, taking application. You can take applications all the time, but they're going to be um, kind of held over, batched until a certain date. So let's say you want to do a project in 2025. You need to be working on that now, right? Absolutely. Yes. So we can take applications all year. And like you mentioned, like technical um, advice and assistance is something that we do all the time. I would say that if you're interested in federal programs for from NRCS, it's really about a year process before we know about what funding is going to go to which applications for contracts. So the earlier we can start meeting with people and, and doing those farm visits, really start developing a conservation plan that would meet what their goals and objectives are, there's the better off those applications are going to be when we start actually putting some funds down and, and see who gets selected. Because unfortunately, we don't have enough funds for everybody. Um, it is a competitive process. How about you, Stacy? Deadlines is something we never fall short on here. Um, so I have a few deadlines coming up here. I'm just going to mention. Um, we have our certification deadline, which is you know your crop reporting that's coming up July 15th. Uh, certifying your acres is one of the most important things you can do as a producer. It's a requirement for a lot of the programs that we offer. We also have the continuous CRP signup. Offers can be accepted until July 31st for the current signup. And I'm going to mention our county committee election nomination deadline is August 1st. Um, our county committee meets monthly. They help make determinations on programs, hiring. They assist us with outreach. Um, the, this year, it's um, LAA1 is up for election, which is the western part of Sherburn County. So if anyone is interested in running for county committee or um, know someone they would like to nominate, just give us a call. Awesome. So what is your favorite part of the job? And I'm going to bounce this back to Katie. Like what, what's a feel good moment for you? Have you had, you know, a project that you've done and you're like, this, this is so great. <laughs> like I will remember <laughs> this this project this family this experience for a really long time yes i was thinking of a couple um and i'd honestly say a lot of the grazing systems that i've helped develop um in my my time in nrcs and going back out to those farms years later and just seeing how the system is working what kind of changes those operators made on their own um, and just kind of seeing how things have developed and Oftentimes those producers will come back and be excited to share like how things are working, the successes that they've had, and then open it up to um, talking with you know, neighbors and other people in their network. And going back out and seeing the conservation on the ground has always been some of my favorite moments. And to add to that, Katie, uh, I had a landowner that is from Benton County that approached me at an event last year, and he was so excited just in general very excited guy and he talked about how he had someone from the SWCD however many years ago named Katie come out and help him with a grazing system and how many years ago was that 
at about 19 probably yeah. and and I know I think I know who you're talking about that's probably one of my favorite I've always remembered going out to to that site and um it's yeah it's great memories going out and yeah. hearing hearing back from those producers years later is yeah. always great isn't it's fun making those connections how about you Stacy? you know it, it kind of same thing I, I I can't don't have like one in particular but I mean it's always a great feeling when you can help someone successfully sign up for a program that is going to greatly benefit them. Um, also working with new producers and them coming in at the very beginning and they don't know where to start and we can kind of point them in the right direction and then seeing them come back after they've gotten their farm or, you know, now all of a sudden they're ready to start utilizing the programs that we offer. It's, it's just a great feeling. Mm -hmm. So in this kind of segues into my last kind of question that I had for you is what is the most surprising part of your job? And I think we joke a lot about how we show up places. We're like, well, we're here from the government. We're here to help. But uh, Stacey, I'll let you talk a little bit about your involvement with farms and yeah. relationships that you've made. Yeah. Yep. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a difficult job at, at time. That's, that was, you know, kind of part of my it's very surprising after I got this job is really there's so much paperwork to keep track of. Um, but also just how emotionally invested that you get with the producers that you're working with. You know, we see, we see their struggles, we see their good times and um, you know, it's just great to know that we're here to help them and listen to them and, and, you know, try to offer the assistance that they need. And I, I'm going to, add to that i was i was talking with my family over memorial day and i was like i have a set of information in my head that nobody cares about and because it's knowing um where people farm what they <laughs> what they grow um their wives names their kids names um how old they are like this <laughs> I think it is surprising to people, you know, people will call and they'll be like, I don't know if you remember me, but I'm like, no, I remember you. Um, I, I would say all three of us probably have been in this realm long enough where we absolutely remember our operators and we, we are invested. Um, farming is different. It's a, it's a family owned small business, right? And not mm -hmm. small for everyone. Sometimes it's a very large business, a lot of moving parts and it can feel sometimes I just feel honored that I get to be invited in and learn about what they're doing and learn about their lives because their business is their life. Right. And I think that really sticks out as when I started with the NRCS back in, I don't want to age myself, but in 2010, um, that, that was, it still surprises me to this day, how emotionally invested I am with the, the families that we work with. Um, Katie, I, I assume you agree. You've been in conservation for a long time, and I'm sure you could have moved on, but you've chosen to stay. Oh, I mean, absolutely. Like you said, building relationships is is huge. It's a huge part of this um, this line of work, and also like, surprising only because you are so invested. And I will also agree, like being able to go out and meet with these. Um, producers when you know that this is their business and planting time, harvest time, everybody's busy, but, you know, they'll meet with you and they want to talk about what's important to them. And um, it is an honor to do that. Yeah. And I've stuck I, in conservation because it's something that, you know, you just love to do and it's not going to walk away from that. It's great. Yeah. And, and every day is different. That's the other thing mm -hmm. that I have found surprising is uh, I mean, how many of you thought that you would be recording a, a podcast as part of your life? But from this, you're probably going to, you might do a farm visit. You might work on some paperwork. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's different all the time. And you never know who's going to walk in the, in the door, or make a phone call. And it's just, it's fun. And anything else that's surprising? Anything um, else that you want to kind of close with about, I'm going to put you on the spot, Stacey, FSA, anything else? You guys have a new employee within the last few months. We, we do have a new employee. Yes, her name is Laura. So I think everyone should come down and meet her. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. 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 It's been lo through lots of changes these last couple of years, but we uh, we keep going and 
just administering all the programs and and having a smile on your face while you do I, it most of the time and and, and most Stacey of the time has if a I candy don't, dish I do I have candy um I, I do want to mention one other thing. Um, the, the, we, I mentioned our, our certification deadline is coming up here July 15th. During the entire month of June, we will have um, treats here, um, bars, candy, anything. We want to get you guys in the door, get this done with, uh, over with. <laughs> Nobody likes doing it, it seems like, but we want to just say thank you um, for coming in and we do appreciate all of your hard work. We know you're busy and we just want to be able to to give you some treats while you're here having to put up with us. I might have to come over for some treats. <laughs> <laughs> well awesome. Don't worry. NRCS has treats too. They have candy dishes. So yeah. and we are right yeah. down the hall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so as they're, they're uh USDA the office is located um, right on the west side of Elk River on your way into town on that service road there. And so I will, if you need to contact them for any of your conservation needs or egg programs, um, their contact information will be on the website. So thank you both uh, for taking the time today to talk about, you know, your role in agriculture in Sherburne County. Thank you. Thank you.